game is really hard work. You might not get a day off in weeks. But I knew that I needed to build a bulletproof buggy. I knew that I had to call in the experts, Al and Andrew. Al, you got any ideas? Yeah, I got some ideas, I might. Ah! <laughs> ah, my cheeks are <laughs> That's about a 14 metre difference. Lock her on. No. Oh, look at that. If you're as good as that in the kitchen, you are marriage material. <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> With all the work that Terrain Tame is doing, I'm really hoping that this buggy will be as strong as it possibly can. That's fantastic. Oh, well, look at that. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Double bars. <laughs> I like that. Have a look at that. What do you what reckon? A ripper. Where do I get one? <laughs> Dab fab. <laughs> the bar work around the vehicle is really important to protect the vehicle and us. You know, you can roll a vehicle out there, so it needs to be pretty strong. So, for, like, for example, you know, you need to have round bars on the side yeah. so that you can't have any sharp edges when you're working with animals. Got one to protect the windscreen, roll bars, side steps. Looks like a Mad Max vehicle. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Right, yeah, so today we're going to fit an e-locker up, so time's, uh, time's fading away. I reckon we get this thing into the workshop. It's coming together now, isn't it? Diff day. Right, eh? Diff day. Once again, Jess, your oil is half full of water. Yeah, I'm not surprised since what we saw yesterday. I really think Jess will benefit from a diff lock in this kind of country. There's lots of loose shifting rocks. Um, yeah, there's some hard packed surface as well, but you can still get bogged and you can still get into trouble, even going through you know, sandy creek beds, even if it hasn't flowed for the last <laughs> 40 years. You know, it's often very deep, loose gravel. And uh, yeah, diff locks are a real good step in the right direction. We're trying to pull out the axle. But as you can see, it's well and truly stuck. You just got two threads in here, and the whole idea is that it screws in till it's hard up against the hub, and then, of course, once you keep going, it pulls the axle out. Technically, we should have two and go even, but for some reason, our line and come back with one bolt. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that. Beautiful. Looks like you've done that before. <laughs> oh, rusty. Right. That won't affect the strength of your axle. We'll clean it off before we put it in there. Okay. But, um, so it's right to pull this all out? Yeah, yeah, it's looking straight out. We do the same thing on the other side, and then it's time to pull the diff out. When cleaning out the diff, you need to be super careful, or you'll cut your hands to shreds. So what we have here is our two diffs. This is obviously the original diff. This yep. is just a standard diff centre. Uh, it's an, what's, what we call an open centre, which means that, that it's got no traction aid in it, there's no LSD in it, there's no diff lock in it, it's just an open centre. So your diff doesn't actually look too bad at all. Uh, it's there's done a lot of rust on it. There, there is. It's done mm. quite a bit of work, but it's not, you know, it's not completely hammered, it doesn't have a heap of backlash. What we have over here is our uh, train tamer diff centre with an e-locker fitted to it. The reason why they call it a diff is because it, it allows you to have a differential of wheel speed. When you turn a corner, one wheel goes faster than the other. Okay, and allows that to happen, otherwise you'd skip across the road. Uh, when you're off-road though, that's not always a desirable thing, mm. because the wheel with the least traction is the one that breaks yeah. traction and then you don't go anywhere, you stop moving. So what the e-locker does is it allows equal drive out to both wheels. So this is a, a two-pinion diff centre, So, and the e-locker is a four-pinion diff centre, so when you're using it as an open diff, it's much stronger. So basically what happens when you hit the magic switch on your dashboard, it energises this magnet. And see these pins yeah. in here? They go all the way through into the other side of your diff and it locks the side gear to the carrier. Yeah, these e-lockers are just a beautiful thing. They're very high quality unit. The gears are manufactured by Eaton in America and the rest of it's manufactured here in Melbourne. 
Is that the same company that does the gearboxes and trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a didgeri of it, yeah, Eaton Fuller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like the ability to use control. Peter you didn't bring uh, your spoogoo here up to Mount Isa, so you could have gone diving with us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've evolved a bit since then. No, this is the real McCoy. <laughs> it wouldn't fit your big head in there, but uh, I'd give it a try. I don't think it'd fit yours in there either, mate. It's all the weight of it, just for fun. You yeah. wouldn't need a lead weight to put you down there, would you? You do. Standard dress diving. Yeah. I think they weigh wear about 40 kilos of lead to keep them on the bottom. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah. That'll keep me down. So we, we actually check, check backlash with this funny little machine. When fitting an e-locker to your existing diff, it's very important to try and reproduce the same tooth marking and backlash you had prior to fitting the e-locker. Before installation, we check the tooth contact pattern to ensure long life and quiet operation of the differential. This check tells you if the teeth are meshing correctly. You can use bearing blue for this, but Alan prefers his special yellow paint. He reckons it's easier to see. Run that through there. So that's pretty good. See the marking there? So what would be a bad marking? A bad marking would be if it was right up the end here. Under, uh, under so you want it to be in the middle? If I was to set this in, say, half an hour, I shift all that, put it back so it's down there or up there, it would go every time really bad and you would hear it down the road it would how almost I could hear it as you drove fast. Yeah. Now that we have a satisfactory marking, in she goes. But we're about due for a break, so Jess takes us down the road for a cultural lesson. Hey Anne, how you going? Hey, hi Jess. Good to see you again. Nice to see you again. <laughs> this is Andrew and Al. Hi hey, Andrew, how lovely to you? meet you. He's Andrew, I oh, know. Hello Alan, how are you? Good thanks, good. School of the Air is for children who are in a remote location. So it can be anywhere from 16 k's away from a school, which doesn't seem like very far. But one of the kids we were speaking to the other day was 800 k's away from, from the school. Come on through and we'll show you where our kids live. We have Mount Isa here, so this is where we are. And all these small markers actually indicate where our kids are out on properties. So as you can see, we go right down to Birdsville up into the Gulf, and then we actually do go into the Territory as well. Yeah. How many studios are here for teachers? We've actually got seven studios seven. set up. Wow. wow. Yeah, so come on now and we'll actually join Year 5. I really support the School of Air. Um, it offers that bit of socialisation to the, to the kids who don't really get any. If there wasn't School of Air, their parents would have to send them away from boarding school, which isn't really fair on anyone. Hey guys, I'm Jess. So this is Andrew. Hi. And this is Al. Hi. Do you like doing School of the Air? Yes. Yes? <laughs> you don't have to wear school uniform. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I like your haircut. She's a beauty. Thank you. <laughs> what about you, Em? Whereabouts do you live? I'm actually one of the father's students because I am 12 or 13 hours with me, Catherine. Ah, oh, I went through there the other day. There are approximately 200 students enrolled in the Mount Isa School of the Air. Now and again, students actually travel into the school to learn from here. Hence why there's a young student in today. The school even offers guided tours every school day for the public, if you're ever up here. Oh, it's nice to meet you all. Yeah, nice to meet you all. Back in the workshop, and it's time to install the switch into the dashboard, and then put in the brand spanking new e-locker into the diff housing. Once we get all the parts back in, we can take it for a test drive, which will mean finding a rocky hill somewhere nearby. And that shouldn't be too difficult considering we're in Mount Isa. Hey Andrew, where's Al? Okay. Oh, uh. Don't have a clue. I'm grinding a bit more off these U-bolts, just so they don't get caught on anything. Okay, so we'll bolt that back up again. Okay. The towel shaft goes back in, and we're just about done. We've got this electric locking diff in the back, and uh, I'm dying to try it out. And I really believe in facts, and the only way to do it is shove it up this hill, <laughs> and as far as you can go without locking it in, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Then we'll lock her in, and Bob's your uncle. Bob's my dad. All right, well, give it to her. Don't muck around, girl. You're in low <laughs> ratio, first gear. Yeah. And this little baby will go anywhere. Oh, this should be fun. We're going to get Wilson going up in here. <laughs> Whoa. 
<laughs> didn't get very far. Oh, yeah, we did. Do you want to lock her in and see what happens? Okay, lock her on. Give it all. Oh, look at that. Put me a rose. As soon as I hit the e-locker switch, I could feel the traction straight away. <laughs> we'll unlock the diff now because we're on a bit more of a flat and we'll just see if we can pick up and get going a bit. Otherwise, we'll try the locker again. That'll be a pretty stiff test for it. Yeah. OK, so we're not getting anywhere at all. We'll lock the diff in again. OK, give it up. Yeah, so what, what we've got now, we have got, we've only got the rear wheels driving because it's not four wheel drive because we haven't got a tail shaft in the front. So this is a pretty, can't get much stiffer test than that. No. To isolate the variables, we have kept the front tail shaft out to demonstrate the difference the e-locker makes. That's pretty awesome. Hold on. <laughs> That's about the end of the penny section. We've got 50 yards further than what we thought. Uh, what we went we locked the locker in. Uh, but uh, that's as far as we'll try it. I'm very pleased and very... I'm very pleased too. <laughs> wow, well, I won't be go. getting bogged anyway. No, you shouldn't be. All right, let's get off the mountain. Sure. Coming up on the next episode... Well, mustering starts tomorrow, so this has got to be ready. All right. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much to do, so it was such a rush to oh. get everything done. You winning over there? I'm getting there. When we first started cutting the shorty down, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Gee, it's just ready to come up in a couple of minutes. It's going to go down. <laughs> yeah, that cracker noise. Fantastic. Up, 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 up.